All right, it did a pile of work to the Mercedes and, and was hoping to have a video having it running and driving off the hoist and it being at CSES in Toronto Motorsports Park in Cayuga today. Unfortunately, there's still a few things that I don't want to rush on it. Uh, I cleaned up the wiring, redid the overflow tank, mounted the alternator, um, redid all the bracketry for the uh, belt for the power steering pump, uh, got rid of all the uh, Mercedes wiring, played with the tunes, um, and cleaned up the inside, moved the AFR gauge from the other, among a pile of other stuff yet. It's still not done, and I'm not getting it off the hoist until all the fabrication and everything is done. So instead, enjoy this video of this beautiful truck that uh, Jason's built. Jason's the guy that donated the LB7 for the C10 and also bought the 4BT that's going in his Diamond T. Um, a great build, even though he's not licensed in anything. Um, beautiful work. Let's check it out. Here we go. So this is Jason's truck, and this is I've seen it a couple times now. This is actually the, the nice guy who gave us the LB7, which is out of this frame, which is going in that C10. But right now, what are we looking at? 2002 GMC one-ton chassis, 77 uh, International Loadstar X fire truck, obviously. The pumper from the back was removed. I saved up enough of the metal to build a box. The only thing that's not international is the fenders are uh, mid-70s Chevy stepside uh, fenders off the Chevy pickup. Super single rears rather than duallys just to be different. Offset, nine inch offsets on the front. It's the international radiator. Uh, the 453T I believe is out of a late 60s dump truck. I bought it out of New York. Uh, and that fellow was kind enough to rebuild it for me before he shipped it. So that was ready to go. Unfortunately, it sat for three or four years, and when we first fired this up after the build, it ran away. One of the injectors uh, hung open, so I had to learn real quick how to fix that because all the Detroit mechanics in this area have either forgot or they're dead. You were counting on it. You were ready a for it, right? Piece of wood. I had a piece of wood ready. Okay. I, and I didn't. You don't know how much vacuum these turbos create until you live it. You almost get one chance to cover the whole hole. If you miss, <laughs> which we did, we missed, and we couldn't get it back off to re realign it. And I thought a, a, a plastic bag would do just fine. <laughs> yeah. No. I just had the wood there just in case, and it and it was like, holy crap! This thing's got a thousand pounds of vacuum. Um, <laughs> and and your job is running vacuum trucks right yes right yes. And, and it's scary I, like I it's only this. 20 yeah <laughs> one of my trucks yeah 170 horse stock and I'm guessing somewhere in the 400 Four, range 480 for torque. torque i think sounds sounds like about 480 yeah. torque. you didn't do much to the engine other than play with um the setting on the on the top end yeah yeah. Just to change it well. Just change, pull the old injector out, put the new injector in, and hopefully everything is. I, the guy yep. said, don't mess with the rail, don't mess with anything else. Just take it out, put it back in. Got to have the air starter, and you had some fun with that? Yeah, that was an adventure. Picked up a deal on eBay for 225 bucks and got it home, had to change the pinion. And the uh, starter guy who didn't was really nervous about taking it because no one does air starters anymore, no one has the manuals. He changed the pinion out. When I went to pick it up, he goes, Oh, you know, the starter's turning the wrong way. Well, how are you mounting it? I said, like a, like a Chevy V8. He goes, oh, it's not going the right way. And he had a hard time tracking down the information on what it needed to go to be flipped. So I tracked down a guy in uh, Alberta who they sell these for oil field. And he said that all the parts are the same. So it's just a matter of manipulating it to do what you want to do. So uh, it's another crash course in air starter repair and flipped the drum and got it going the right way. So that was fun. And uh, yeah. So that process was what, six months? The whole process was six months. Just for the starter. Yeah. 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 And the alternative was to order a brand new one, which they're two thousand dollars, which yeah. is not not be fun anymore. No. But the whole project start to finish has been two two and a half years. Mind you, it's only five, six hours a week. You know, right. In my spare right. time, nothing. Right. So this is its first day on the road? First day on the road. Yeah. So the deal was it was gonna help you get it running. Yeah. And that didn't happen. Get the air governor hooked up. Yeah, so now we've got the air governor hooked up, so we're gonna take it for a little drive. 
Grab a coffee. Yeah. See what. Uh... See what else we can break. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I get a large with three creams and a medium double double. Large, three cream, and a medium double double. Anything else? That's it. <laughs> okay, take your headset off because this thing has a really loud starter. I, I don't want you to go deaf. <laughs> You know how hard it is to undo those bolts because they're you're, you can't contort, and they're those ones that are egg shaped and they're tight all the way down. The Audi too. A quarter turn to do that for hours. So this is a nice way to change the pull clutch to a push clutch, push clutch to a pull, one of the two. This is a little uh, diesel to lubricate the starter and you can see that it's spraying it nicely right over the side of the block because it's, it's veins in the back of here. This is your air coming from your tank and then the veins slide out and uh, um, hit the housing but you need to lubricate that. so have to keep that topped up and that just sprays over the side of the block. It uh, take a lot of pictures of the engine as it is because it won't look like this for very long. And then we're smelling a lot of burning oil inside the cap. So we're thinking maybe this breather um, is spewing some stuff out the holes that aren't plugged yet. So we got this uh, rad hose off of one of my trucks, um, parts trucks. We'll throw that on and see if that makes it any better. It's about the right size, it's about the right price. It's like it was meant for it though. I'm gonna stick that last side down there, see if that makes a difference or not. And then the governor, we threw the governor on it. So the governor goes to this little plate on the top of the compressor, and that just makes the valves float, so it turns the compressor off. We've got about 100. We're gonna turn it up a little bit more to about 125. So this tank is just the reserve for the starter and nothing else, but when it's empty, you can't start. Oh yeah, not not nothing else. Also the air horns, but um... don't forget most <laughs> Well, you'd rather blow your horns than start. <laughs> no, it only drops at about ten pounds to uh, start it. Well, you need at least seventy-five to start it. So we'll turn that up a little bit, and uh, and we're good to go. You bought it with the engine and the transmission attached already. Yes, complete a complete setup. So he set it up for you. Yeah, apparently the trannies from a C70 or a C60, about a 71, 72 four-speed and there's an adapter plate because the flywheel housing is SAE 1 or 2, I'm not exactly sure, just basically surround. And then there's a coupler that goes from the back of the crankshaft to the splines on the front of the transmission inside the clutch. Okay, so that was all nice to set up for you, but it was a push clutch? This was a whatever goes to the back, yeah, push backwards, and this was a... <laughs> One I, of the uh, two, so you put the cable in, but now you got the reduction, it's really easy to push the clutch Yeah, in. yeah, the clutch was from the fire truck. It was a gas motor, a 446, 
uh, International V8. Um, and uh, I was actually going to keep that more because it really sounded good. But finely tuned, they get about three miles per gallon. Yeah. So that was a big boat anchor. Um, but I ripped everything off that frame so quick, I wasn't even really paying attention to the clutch because I figured I'd deal with it later. But this pedal moves up, and that clutch means to move back. So it, I had to do that. Okay. And you've got 476 rear end? 470 rear end. Yeah, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. 475. 475. It could be, it could be 476. I was just counting the... Uh, oh, okay. So it's a 475 rear end, and, and we figure top speed's about 70k an hour. So we need to, need to change that. So I think a 373 Even would with actually the huge be a tires, nice. I thought that would make a difference. Yeah, but it's not. <laughs> so let's change the governor, and then uh, we'll take it for a little drive. So what's the bottle on the on the seat? Is that your NOS, your yeah, NOS? Yeah, my propane. <laughs> that is a bottle of CO2. There's three ways to shut off a runaway diesel. One is to block off the airflow by hand. One is to block off the airflow with a with a electronic valve, but that kit is close to four thousand dollars. So I thought, well, that's not really an option. And then I started reading on internet where CO two starves the air, but you got to run out with the fire extinguisher and you know take off your intake. And it, by the top time you're you're running away, you're not running close. <laughs> so I figured I I seen a couple of guys had plumbed it right into the intake, and if it ever runs away, I just crack the valve, pumps it right into the intake, and hopefully shuts it down. I have not tested it yet. Because I don't know how many blasts you have in that tank, and I don't want to have to test it and then have to go get it filled. I'd rather test it in the driveway and see if it, it actually shuts it down. That's awesome. But yes, it's propane <laughs> for more power. And so we just went to Tim Hortons and back, and that was its second drive. First one was on the way here. Now he's going to let me drive it. So we made a couple adjustments to it. Um, the air canister on the top of the engine is uh, we can really smell the oil coming into the cab and uh, so we put a uh, pipe going down to block that we adjusted the governor a little bit to give us a little bit more air which is only for the starter and the air horns and uh, yeah we're gonna fire it up <laughs> here we go reverse is over and back yeah that clutch is really easy yeah <laughs> So just jam it in. <laughs> so the, these trucks, do you clutch for every gear or just? Personal preference, I double clutch. Okay. Uh. smelling the oil anymore. No. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I would never have thought that. Yeah. shocks on the front but they're old on the back and they're a little bit oh shoot, they're a little bit rubbery <laughs> this is where you test the build quality this is the gm this is the gm test track <laughs> sorry man I haven't been down this road since winter, so...
like they said, when you drive this motor, you got to slam the finger, your finger in the door before you get in it, so you're pissed off. <laughs> you, you really do. It does not like being down low. Not at all. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's awesome. That wasn't too nerve-wracking no, for you? No. Really? Because I'm like, am I driving it too fast no, no, no. or no? This is a tag axle rubber. If okay. you notice, yep. the, the sidewall yep. is very short. Because I yep. wanted the shortest tire possible to get the truck as low as possible. Right. This is a tag axle. Super. And I think it's 36 inches uh, top to bottom yep. to, in height. This tire is 36 inches in height. There's no such tire in North America as a super single. They're all 42, 41, okay. 40. So I'm like, how do I do this? Surfing the net one night, I'm over in Europe. All the trucks in Europe run low tires to get under the low bridges. Right. They need to be as short as possible. Okay. I said that tire is available in Europe. And the guy's like, "Oh, you're not gonna like the price," because <laughs> they had. Well, I had waited three weeks for this. These tires. Yep. Yep. Made in Luxembourg. Yep. You know Lifetime that, warranty. You know that's good quality. Good rubber. I can't believe how nice it rides. Of, of, so this is your third build? Yes. Yeah. And your, what are your other trucks? We had the Ford on the Ford, channel. Yeah, with a factory chassis, uh, boxed, the frame and uh, air suspension. And what year is that? Uh, 50, 40, 49. 49. And then you have a GMC? GMC 46 on an S10 chassis with airbags, and it rides 50% better than the Ford okay. with the airbags. Same, and then, same system. And then this one? And this one rides the best. <laughs> That's crazy. It's the so, torsion rod. So the one-ton GM frame yeah. rides the nicest with this truck on there. So uh, what's the truck? What are you guessing? Five, 6,000 pounds? 7,000 pounds? 8,000 yeah. pounds? A full loaded dually diesel is 82. Yeah. So I can't imagine it being much more than that. Okay. It's really not so it's a nice fit with the Detroit on the front axle and the torsion bars. Yes. I think you need a little bit more weight on the back, actually. Like like hitting the potholes, yeah. it's like there's not a whole lot of weight back here. Or new shocks. Or new shocks. Or look at the sway bar. <laughs> yeah, you might want to tighten that bolt. <laughs> That's one of those things. That's okay. See, as a passenger, I would have said put 411s in right away. And then you drive it and you're like, wow, this thing's like really doggy until you're like 2,500 RPM to like 35.4 or wherever this thing revs to. And then you start getting that, that power. So I don't know. The truck story might is, be okay. just wear your earplugs. Yep. Yeah, it's a nice truck, but you got to wear your earplugs. <laughs> well, thank you very much for uh, bringing it. And My pleasure. Let me work it on a little bit. All right, comment if you guys like, if you like this kind of video. Um, we're trying something new. We really like these home-built projects. We love the ingenuity that goes into it. And especially, you're not, you're not a licensed mechanic. You're not a licensed welder. You're just a guy that loves the art, loves the vehicles, and wants to build something cool. And basically, take your time, watch enough videos on how to do certain stuff, and exactly. you can do it, right? Yeah. yeah a lot of determination to finish the projects because it is frustrating but if you guys do like these type of type of things we'll do more of them we'll just do these little ride-alongs um and showcase your guys' builds because this is what we're all about so thanks for watching and here we go <laughs> i thought he jumped one